So the concept of a track preset is I can take any track that I might want to use over and over again and create a preset so that the next time I use that same track or the next time I want to do something similar, I'll have the same track to work from. So I'll just give you an example here. This guitar harmony track that I created, I had a guitar part that was recorded by plugging straight into the audio interface. And then I stacked up a bunch of plugins to get a specific sound that I was looking for. And so I used various EQ dynamics and um, guitar amp simulators and delay effects to create that sound. Now let's say that's the sound that I really like for guitar solos. And whenever I'm you know, trying to do something like this, I want to use that same sound. So I want this same stack of plugins to already be applied on a new track. I can create a track preset out of this guitar harmony track. And then in the future, I can just recall that track preset and have it ready to go for a new guitar solo. All right. So let's walk through how to use track presets and then how to create your own. When you get Pro Tools, it comes with a bunch of factory track presets that it ships with. And you can get access to them through the new tracks dialog box. So if you hit Command Shift N to go into your new tracks dialog box, when you go to select your track type, you'll notice that down at the bottom of the list of the various different types of tracks you can choose, there's a submenu for track presets. And if you've never created your own track presets, what you'll see in this submenu is an Avid category. And if you use a current version of Pro Tools, you'll also see the Pro Tools Carbon category. So they've included that for everybody, whether you're a Carbon owner or not. When you choose a category like uh, Avid, let's say Air Instruments Bundle, then there are subcategories in there, or let's say Avid Channel Strips or Avid Delay or Avid Dynamics, whenever you choose one of these, let's just choose the Avid Delay as an example. Um, that puts you in the category. Within that category, you may have multiple choices. And so the next pop-up menu lets you choose which specific track preset you want to incorporate into your session. So if I choose something like Delay, stands to reason this is going to be a delay return. This is an aux input track that has a delay on it already. And then the question is, how is the delay plugin configured? And this, this pop-up menu lets me sort of estimate what's that delay going to be configured to do. So is it whole notes with 25% feedback? Is it triplets with 25% feedback? Is it dotted 16th notes with 25% uh, feedback? You know, you got a bunch of different choices in here. So let's say we wanted to choose, I don't know, quarter notes with 25% feedback. I'm interpreting that that's what this means. I'm going to choose that and I'm going to click create. Now, as always, when you create a track through the new tracks dialog box, it'll create it next to whatever your selected track was. The last selected one in my case was Guitar Harmony. So it created this new track right next to it, gave it the name based on that track preset. And then on this track, it has a plugin already on it. It's called Mod Delay. Not a big surprise that it would be a delay plugin because that's the category that I chose from. And inside the Mod Delay, you can see that it's set up with 25% feedback, just like I expected it would be. And it's set up to synchronize to the session tempo. And it's set up with it synchronizing to quarter notes. So that's what I expected it to be, right? That's the idea. The type of track that it inserted was, is an aux input track. You can tell that by the down pointing arrow there. So we know this is intended to serve as a return for a send. So now I can send anything I want to this track and I'll get that half note or quarter note rather with 25% feedback. And let's talk about creating your own track presets. So I mentioned before, I've got this guitar harmony track that I set up and it has all these plugins on it. And it's also got a send to a reverb on it. And now I just want to make that available for future use. 
And I don't just mean future use in this session. I mean future use in every session I ever create from here forward, or even sessions that already exist that I open up and work on from here forward. So I'm going to save this track as a track preset. It's pretty simple. You select the track, and then you go under the track menu. Again, that's where all of our track-based commands are. And under the track menu, you'll see this option that says Save Track Preset. And here again, we'll just pause for a moment and look at the keyboard shortcut. Option Shift P. All right, so we're going to create a brand new track preset. And when you do that, you're brought, you're brought to this window, this dialog box. And at the top of the dialog box, you choose a category. Well, notice it's using the Avid category by default, which would mean if I create my own, presets, they're going to be in the Avid category, which to me doesn't make sense. They should be in my own category that I create. And so if you click on that pop-up menu, you'll see the other categories that are available. Now, in my case, I've created a bunch of them because I've done a lot of these. So you'll probably say, I want to add my own, which makes sense. So you choose Add Category. When you choose Add Category, you get a dialog box that comes up that lets you give a name to your category. So we might call this Frank's 201 presets. And then you'd be tempted to just click OK, but before you do, notice where it's creating that category. It's creating it inside the Avid category. So you can click on this, and you can see that you get a submenu of track presets, and you can choose between the Avid category or any other categories that already exist. But for you, if you're just starting out, the only other category that will exist is Pro Tools Carbon and I don't want it in either of those two locations. And the way you make it not inside one of these others is you have to click where it says Track Presets and not click where it says the name of a track preset. And if you're lucky, you'll get it to close and then show that it says Create in Track Presets there. You might have to try it several times before it works, but that's what you want it to say. And then you can click OK. Now you're creating your own top-level category and inside that top level category, you can give it a name. It by default takes the name of the track, but you can change it. There's no reason why you have to stick with that. So I might just call this guitar solo, you know, whatever I want it to be. At this point, we can choose whether we want to include the media that's on the track, the audio or MIDI clips that are on the track. In most cases, you won't want to include those. There are some use cases where you might but for our purposes, we'll leave off the audio. And then you have the option to auto tag the track preset. And if you choose that, it'll put in all the tags related to any plugins that are on the track and other things. I don't tend to auto populate. What I tend to do instead is have my own tags, my classifications that I've created that I might want to use for this. So I might put in a tag like a uh, guitar, and then I might put in a tag like um, amp or whatever. So you can put anything in here and it becomes a tag. You type the word in and hit hit enter or return and it becomes a tag. So now I'll just tag this with those two things. Um, but you'll see in a minute how you can use those tags for um, finding your track presets. All right, so now let's say I'm in a new session and just to simulate that, I'm gonna you know hide all those existing tracks. So I'm in a brand new session, has no tracks in it, and I want to have a guitar track that I can record, plug my guitar straight in and have all those same sounds on it. Now I can go through the new tracks dialog box and in here I can choose the category that I just created, Frank's 201 presets, and I choose that. And now within that, I can see the presets that are in that category. Currently there's only the one guitar amp. And when I choose that and click create, Pro Tools adds a track to my session based on that preset. And again, in the mix window, there we can see all the plugins on the track, and they're all configured exactly the way they were in the original. So let's say that I'm working with other tracks, and somewhere in here, I have a guitar track that I've used that I'm, I've already recorded guitar on, but let's say I recorded it straight and there's no processing on it. And now on that one, I want to put the same plugins that are over here. Now I could option drag them over or whatever, but I'm going to show the, the show you the other way, which is to use the track preset as an effects chain. So if you click on an insert, 
you'll see that one of your options when you click on the insert is this, this subcategory called recall inserts. So what you can do here is go and find a track preset that you want to use and then recall its inserts. When I recall it, you can see it brings in all the inserts from that track preset. 